Alright, so I'll take you on a quick tour of our garden and show you what has been going on since our last video. It's been about four weeks or so now. And we've been really just holding off and waiting until there's no more chance of any frost to go any further in our garden, which I'd highly recommend y'all learn about your uh, last frost date in your area. Uh, I follow this uh, local group on Facebook. I think it's the North Texas Vegetable Gardener Group. And I'm, I've been watching a lot of people uh, had bad experiences because they were so excited spring was here. It's been warm, much warmer here lately. And well, a lot of their all their peppers and tomatoes died because we had a uh, a little frost a few maybe last week or so. So I've learned in the past just don't rush it and uh, plant as you should normally do. Um, I've lost too many plants over the past many many years so I just try not to rush things in the vegetable garden. So let's check out and see what we got growing on here back behind me. Alright so here's our garden here. As you guys seen before we got our onions. Um, they were pretty sad looking when we first bought them. And they're actually, well a few of them died or did not grow. But they're coming along here as you can see. Um, I wasn't sure if we were going to get any onions because they were a buy one get two bundles free. And they were they were pretty sad looking but they actually are growing. So they're a little bit behind than we would have liked to have normally planted them. But uh, that's what we've got on that so far and then we keep on coming over here. To the right, our potatoes did sprout a couple of weeks ago, and as I was talking about the uh, frost, well, it also nipped some of these potato plants, and and it wasn't that bad of damage really, and it's not going to hurt them at all. If I come in a little bit closer here and show you this, um, you can kind of see where they got the least for frost bitten. But uh, one year I had uh, the potato plants uh, kill all the way back because uh, we had a freeze and they still came back. So these potatoes will be fine even if there's a little frost or even a freeze because they were one year all the way dead to the ground and they still came back. So it's pretty crazy impressive with that. Here's some Swiss chard. We've had this planted for a long, long time in our garden. This stuff is easy to grow and it grows all winter long, all summer, spring, never dies. And then I did plant a little bit more down here. Here's some lettuce that we got growing. Uh, it's coming along very nicely. As you can see, this was a, uh, I think one of those nine packs at Home Depot. That is a really great deal if you can ever find it. Uh, it's kind of hard to find sometimes, the nine packs, but uh, as you can see, we're gonna have quite a bit of lettuce here pretty soon. We'll start picking some of the young, younger leaves and start eating them. Alright, so as for the rest of the garden here, this is all what everything else we got planted last weekend here a few days ago. Uh, right here I've got uh, some chives and fennel down this row and a little bit of cilantro on the back end there. And these rows here I've got a variety of bell peppers, hot peppers, and whatnot there on those. So these are all different pepper plants that uh, will eventually start growing there. So we'll cross the fingers and hope there's no more frost. So uh, I don't have time to always cover, come out here and cover things up. So I'll try to plant at a a good date. And then we got a little bit of basil here in the front row. And this row is uh, uh, green beans. We got different varieties of green beans. I think the yellow wax, I did a purple and some uh, nice little tender filet green beans. This row here I'm probably going to leave empty so I can walk in here actually because uh, I've got our new trellis that I did. If you check out my previous videos you've seen a trellis that I made out of some wood fence pickets and it lasted for several years but uh, last year we had a really strong storms and just tore it up. So this year what I did I got this at a um, tractor supply and I think they call it a handy panel. They have these big long 16 foot panels but these are a little bit shorter and they're easier to travel home with and that's what I grabbed this year. So I just used some of these uh, metal fence stakes and hammered it in the ground, put some uh, twist ties on there and uh, yeah we're going to let that uh, grow. We got uh, some cucumbers here and uh, I think a Chinese long bean also planted in this row 
So what I usually do on our trellis here, I plant on each side of the uh, trellis, as you can see there. So we'll have two rows climb, climbing up this trellis eventually. And we come along this way here. I cleaned out our, uh, uh, this is our garlic down here that's been planted since about October. About half of it uh, did not come up if you saw in my past video. This is a actually store-bought garlic, but uh, we went ahead and cleared this bed out where all the weeds were doing, growing. And uh, right here, what I decided to plant this year here in this little bed is our uh, squash, summer squash. So we got yellow squash and uh, zucchini and a few other squashes, varieties here. And they'll have plenty of room because they get quite large once they uh, start growing. So I needed a lot of room. If I planted them in my main bed, they would have took up about two rows worth once they get full grown. So that's what I did there. So we're going to have our squash down this row. And then if we keep on coming down, our asparagus, we've already been harvesting our asparagus. That's our one of the first um, things to ever get out of our garden, which is always fun in the spring. First spring harvest of asparagus, if you can see in here, they're starting to come up. And you have to really watch them. We come out here about every day and pick them because if you wait too long they will get very tall very quickly so that is our asparagus bed this asparagus bed's been here for i don't know seven or eight years now and it's doing very very well and this year if you notice i went with a uh, pecan mulch in our beds here in our vegetable garden. Usually the past several years I have done a uh, cedar mulch mainly because one year I found a big nest of snakes when I was tilling up the garden and I read uh, that uh, cedar mulch uh, they don't like cedar mulch repels them or whatnot. But this year we went with the uh, pecan mulch. This is a, you know a local native product here. Texas pecan trees grow like crazy and this is uh, the Dallas Arboretum actually uses a lot of pecan mulch out there if y'all ever been out there. Then this bed we revamped and uh, it's gonna be a perennial herb bed. I had some blackberries that died out last year. I'm not sure what happened exactly. We dug those out of the ground and so we uh, this is our um, oregano we've had for a while and these are the uh, garlic chives that are perennial we've been growing. Then I added some uh, sage, uh, lavender, thyme, and this is a uh, French tarragon. Uh, there's two different kinds of tarragons. The tarragon you find in a seed packet, I believe, is a Russian tarragon. A true French tarragon you can only get from a, um, a cutting. So uh, keep that in mind if you're looking for a tarragon. All right, on to our other bed here. This is where we plant our tomatoes. And um, if you're anti-tilling from my past video, um, we till our garden here. But the uh, people who are anti-tilling, you'd be proud of me. I did not till this bed. Uh, more of a laziness. We left the fabric that was here from last year and uh, cleared it out. And we just replanted tomatoes back in here. And that's how we're going to go with that this year. Because I uh, just didn't have enough time. And... I didn't want to mess with it, so that's what we did. We got uh, several varieties of tomato plants growing, uh, planted, and uh, we'll go over those as they start growing. But if I come right here, this is really what I want to show you all, is this uh, plant here. This is an artichoke, and I've never grown artichoke before. I always challenge you all to try new things, and this is one new item that we've never grown. And this year, I think we planted this maybe September, October, around there maybe. And it's been here ever since. And so I'm going to have to do a little bit of research. I was reading up on it. But we have our first artichoke actually on there, which is pretty cool. Oh, and it looks like there's another one here starting to uh, as well. So we had two here. So uh, I thought I'd share that with y'all as our first artichoke plant. It is perennial here for us in Zone 8 in uh, Dallas, Texas. It's where we are, if you're curious. So there is our artichoke. This thing is huge. So I kind of just planted my tomatoes around it because this thing has gotten gigantic. This is one single plant that we picked up at a nursery 
uh, way back in September, I believe. And then a few more tomato plants here. All right, so there's our garden overview here. Uh, I get a question some people ask me every year is how I heal up our rows. Um, I, when I till the main bed here, the tiller kind of makes its own rows as you go back and forth. And all I do is use my, um, my hoe and just pile it up a little bit higher and make sure they're nice and straight. So that's, I just do it by hand. It's nothing uh, high tech with that. The tiller kind of makes rows as I go up and down and then I just pile up the rows a little bit more with the soil. So uh, thanks for watching. Check out my other videos if you have any questions about our mending a soil or how we do this or that to leave a comment down below if you got a certain question i i read a lot of the comments and uh i don't have always time to answer everybody but i will i do see them and uh i thank you all for watching with us and uh until next time wish everybody luck on their uh gardenings coming up out of their backyard challenge you to grow something if you're not already it's very simple. Now everything is planted in our garden as you can see. Now we're just going to sit back and watch it grow and harvest it as we need is the idea. And that's how we got our garden set up to uh, be easily managed. So make it a great day.